Hey everybody, so welcome to the Summer 2024 Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase where I review some of the new tools out there in the Knowledge Graph space. I do this completely on my own. I have no relationship with any of the companies that I review. I get no sponsorships, I get no kickbacks, I get nothing. Uh, I do this because I like to see what new tools are out there and see what they're all about. And it seems like all of you appreciate being able to also see those uh, and not necessarily have to reach out to the salespeople right away or get more of a biased view from the vendor themselves. And I forgot to film which tool we are going to be reviewing today. So that one, that's the one that we're going to be reviewing today. If you're wondering where I am, there's another video coming on that soon. Uh, but also make sure you stick around to the very end of the video because my honest review is written up at the very end and throughout the whole process, I ask questions as we go and hopefully that helps you if you're interested in this. If not, at least it's entertaining, hopefully. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, let's go get started. Um, yeah, my name is Sebastian Schmidt. I'm a CEO at, at Matterfacts, and we are specifically focusing on the business users. So on kind of the, the generic user in the organization, those people that hold most of the relevant domain knowledge, um, and they have to be able to capture that, and we, we thought there is no tool really tailored to them. It's all too much expert. It's too much expecting mm -hmm. you to know semantic web. So, so what I'm starting off is a, a plain vanilla meta factory. So if you go to our website, you register for the um, host your own um, instance mm -hmm. and you download it, that's basically what you're getting. What we have here is a, a system that we have built um, for ourselves with a number of ontologies um, we have seen over time, we have worked with um, different examples uh, for, for different industries. And this is a system that is continuously growing. Um, so one example um, field is the, the pharma field. And the idea, um, I don't know um, if everyone is aware of that, but the idea with ontologies, uh, sort of semantic models in the, the semantic web uh, standard is, that you should not reinvent the wheel. Because if you are in a specific industry, if you're working on a specific uh, use case, very likely someone else in the world has mm -hmm. that same problem, is modeling that same mm -hmm. things. And uh, therefore, there are a lot of great um, ontologies out there that you can reuse. And so are all of these preloaded? So those are exactly, there are uh, many of mm -hmm. them are just preloaded. They are imported from uh, the, the public. Like here mm -hmm. we have from the Pistoia Alliance, the um, IDMP um, ontology. Mm -hmm. uh, but also you can build them directly in the tool. We'll, we'll do that in a second as well. Awesome. So uh, here we have an, an example uh, for registration um, authorities. So um, in the, the pharma domain, whenever you um, have a, a new product, a new drug, you have to go through a number of uh, uh, regulatory processes to, to get that out in the market. And this ontology describes part of that. Uh, specifically, it describes those registration um, authorities and how they interact with other relevant uh, concepts in the, the world of pharma. And that's where um, we are following a, uh, a modular collaborative approach. So I could just go in here and I could activate this ontology for editing. Right now it is blocked because it's a specific released mm -hmm. version. Um, and I, I can see all of the, the classes that are in here. I can see all of the attributes and relations that are defined. I can uh, click on something and, and learn more um, mm -hmm. about this specific entity. Um, but what I can also do is I can go back in here and I can say, I want to create a new one. And we want to create um, pharma regulatory ontology. And that's now for our own internal needs. Um, we have versioning uh, built in here. So um, nice. graph databases generally don't have such a feature. So we're using an um, uh, Git or uh, versioning uh, platform for, for that specific. Small little group. round of applause. <laughs> That's one of the hardest things to do in graph. And I'm you, you're just like, yeah, we just threw it in. Again, like everyone has to figure out what their versioning process is because you can add a lot of breaking changes when you have versioning um, and changes to a graph. But I'm glad that it's already pre-built into when someone's developing a project. Yes. Yeah. And this is something, um, you know, for for the actual data that you tie in with it. There is this, well, sometimes I need versioning, sometimes I don't. 
honestly, when you're building ontologies, when you're building semantic models, I think you always need it. It's not an, an option. You, you just require that if you want to in any way do a collaborative um, yeah. process here. And what I can now do is I can either just work in my own bubble and create my ontology. Mm -hmm. But what we talked about it, that's rarely what I want. I want to build on what already exists. So I can tick a few ontologies. Oh, I like that. Well, these are relevant for what I want to do. And these will be imported and they will be um, available in here for um, kind of bootstrapping that ontology. You know so, what I also think, like if you're the ontologist, or if you're someone at your organization and you're trying to show what, when you're using linked data standards like that, a lot of folks I've talked to, they don't realize that you can mix and match the yes. different schema. And I think you've you've just shown it. Yes. And um, now we did select two ontologies. Somehow it shows that we already have six. And the reason for that is that what you're importing might have imports defined mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. So you're getting all of that um, back. So you, you don't have to know exactly what someone else imported. If you know, well, I need something that's in their ontology, you take that one and you automatically get everything that belongs to. Nice. And now I can move my scope to say, well, I care about all of the ontologies. So I, I want to see what's in here. And I can say, well, actors, that's an important one. I need that. Um, and then um, there's, um, there's such a regulatory context. That's a good thing. We'll need that. And we'll need the agency. And now I can go in here and I can um, define my own links to those. So I can, uh, and I need to add my own class. I need to kind of build something of my own, something that I um, create context to. So my, my own organization class, let's say organizations are not defined in here. And that's really a bad example because they're defined in many good ontologies yeah. that we use it from. And now I can define a link to this. And here again, I can reuse. I can um, take existing okay. relations that already exist, or I can come up with something um, that I uh, kind of need here. So we have the regulatory context. Uh, we have the, the organization. Um, let's say they, they monitor it. And now um, I can go further and I can define uh, minimum and maximum counts. So, um, what I can now do is I can save those changes. And um, what I get with that is such a in development version. Mm -hmm. So this is already in the graph database. It can be run in the graph database. I can, for example, do validations against the data. Um, I can already look at my Git versioning because it's already automatically mm -hmm. versioned on Git. So what I can now do is I can start a review process because you also need some, some governance around that mm -hmm. um, if you're collaboratively working on that. So I can add in a reviewer and uh, just for simplicity, um, I'm going to uh, make myself a, a reviewer. And um, with that, I can now also see that I have to review something. I can see um, in which state it is so that the reviewer has not provided any review yet. Um, and as the reviewer, I can now jump in here and I see, hey, there is something to review. I can see my specific view that has been prepared for me, or I can switch to another one if there are others. And I can now say, well, um, I want to approve or I want to request changes hmm. to this. I can look at what exactly has been done in here. So we see someone created a new class, someone created mm -hmm. a new relation. We are so invested into knowledge graphs that we are trying to make everything a knowledge graph. So mm -hmm. all of that information you are adding here is part of your graph, which means nice. you can query it together with the ontology in the same way you can maintain it as you know additional metadata around the ontology. Because in the end, it is going to be a documentation yeah. of your modeling decisions. So you want to have that as, as close as possible to that, that artifact you are creating here. Now um, we can go in here, we can you know publish this, um, can set it to in development to ready to be published, um, make that available. And um, what I can also do um, inside of the ontology, I can link it up to vocabularies. So here we have defined a vocabulary restriction on um, a, a SCOS vocabulary defined in the same platform, which means 
I can jump in here and I can manage that specific vocabulary, which means for um, that class, only values from that vocabulary are accepted. And again, here I have the, the same uh, concepts behind. I have the, uh, the, the versioning in Git, I have the, mm -hmm. uh, the whole management in the platform and uh, can easily get um, from, uh, yeah, get that out to the domain experts to, to continuously maintain. Nice. And they don't necessarily have to be ontology experts to do that. They hopefully don't, yes. So <laughs> uh, now doing is that most of the platform is um, ontology driven. Mm -hmm. I would quickly show. Now, what I can do is if I have all of that already defined, I can actually build applications on top of that. Mm -hmm. Or... I can integrate data via that because that ontology is also how I want to do the data integration. And if I have a number of data sources that we are federating, I can also use that to know exactly which data for which of the parts of my ontology will I find where, which makes this more efficient, um, allows us to, to have more efficient uh, queries against the different sources um, and give you an, a better overview of where the data resides. And then in the front end, um, as your ontology changes, matures, expands, you can easily follow up. Um, we can have fully automated um, creation of front ends, or you can have a mix of, of manual automated all the way to very tailored specific experience that would even um, differ from the underlying ontology. Here you have a, a split into what we call a branding app. Mm -hmm. um, so you can really make it look like this is a, a homegrown internal tool. And for a lot of organizations, this, this corporate identity, corporate design is so critical for adoption of applications mm -hmm. um, that that is, is one thing that we are supporting here specifically. And then you have your use case app. So that is the specific functionality and presentation of the data and the interaction. And that's you know everything from search to pathfinding to exploration mm -hmm. to data offering, um, different dashboards, all of that together. And the, the use cases are from uh, interior design modeling to uh, spare part management mm -hmm. to product lifecycle management, uh, risk assessment. Uh, area. The world is your oyster. <laughs> you can, so, there's yeah. so many now. <laughs> we, we're continuously getting surprised by uh, the, the interesting use cases that you can build on a graph. So it's really great. Um, to, to see also what the, the community is, is doing with that and all of the ideas of, of where to apply graph. And unfortunately, I can't show you any of those customer systems, um, but mm -hmm. I, I can show you um, some of our um, internal examples. So taking that uh, Nobel Prize ontology, um, we had one of our consultants uh, invest two, three days to quickly build a front end for that. So um, we can navigate here by, by Laureate or by uh, Nobel Prize. We can, for example, do that by Laureate here. So what we are doing is we are federating here, meaning we use the Nobel Prize data set and ontology, mm -hmm. but then we have um, additional information that we pull from Wikidata, like for example, those pictures. I see, okay. And then from the ontology, we use the relations and attributes to build those filters here automatically. So if we would be expanding the ontology, we would get additional filters. Mm -hmm. And um, we can, for example, say we are looking for someone in a specific country. We can now um, high to low, see which countries had most, mm -hmm. um, for example, so like the US. Um, we can check the, the categories. Um, again, might want to have the high to low. Um, just 10 in literature, let's see who that is. Um, and we can, for example, see that uh, Bob Dylan uh, was awarded with a Nobel Prize in Literature in 2016. And we can jump in here. And again, we follow that link data publishing here. So we have the, the mm -hmm. UI again here for mm -hmm. the Bob Dylan entity. So the, the ontology is basically what's driving um, the, the structure here. Mm -hmm. So we um, we have Bob Dylan, the uh, 
the, the data resource um, typed as a um, as a person and as a laureate. Mm -hmm. And in the platform, we now said we need a, a template for all laureates. So whenever you click on a laureate, mm -hmm. we want to have the same way of visualizing. Okay, it. so, so the ontology is helping you build a template for the data that they populate. Okay. Exactly. So that, that's kind of building the framework around yep. it. Mm -hmm. And then in that template, we can now say, well, which data are we actually interested in? So let me quickly log in here. Oh, no, I have to go back. So what I can now do is I can actually edit the page. So I can go into the experience of someone building out mm -hmm. um, such mm -hmm. a template. And there we can then see how we are bringing together the data from uh, different sources and, and how we are using the, the structure. So we can already see here, um, the resource Bob Dylan itself has no definition for how to visualize it. But mm -hmm. there is applicable templates laureate and person, and mm -hmm. the laureate one is marked because that's the one that has been configured and is currently ah. being displayed. And then in here, I see basically a mashup of Sparkle queries mm -hmm. and such HTML tags. So mm -hmm. those are our um, components. So those are web components specifically designed for interacting on graph data. Mm -hmm. And then with a simple Sparkle query, um, you kind of define which information you want to show here. So here mm -hmm. we have a, a map and we are pulling information um, from, uh, I think this is mostly from the, the core data set Mm -hmm. But then we are also doing a, a mashup with the Wikidata endpoint, and we are pulling additional information there. Mm -hmm. And while this looks like just a standard service clause, it actually uses our federation engine mm. to create an, an optimized query to pull that information from oh, nice. a, a Wikidata endpoint and then um, put that together in here. So this looks a lot like the kind of code you would have to build a web page. So if I was coming in and I wanted to make a template, do I have to write all this code out or is there like drag and drop kind of templates that I could use instead? So the, there is a number of things. So you have a- uh, uh, Okay. So you have okay, a completion here. It gives you all of the different components. And then um, let's use something that's maybe more interesting, the chart um, for the semantic chart. We also have a documentation page. And on the documentation page, we give you examples, mm -hmm. we give you recommendations, configuration details, and then we give you a number of uh, detailed examples with the specific code you could just copy. So that's the, the idea to, to allow you to be really quick in, in building um, new visualizations, also getting some inspiration on you know, what, what I can actually do with this, what type of uh, charts are available, how exactly would I configure them. Nice. Um, it's often easier if you just have a, a starting example and you yeah. can just copy and, and work with that. Yeah, I like that. And then again, everything I'm building here, um, I can uh, version again on, um, on Git. So uh, again, this idea that I have a proper versioning system behind, I have the, the different versions, iterations I'm going through, um, I can accordingly tag those artifacts with my ontology version so I know exactly how they fit together mm -hmm. um, and step-by-step step, um, involve my environment with that. Uh, the easiest thing you can do in the platform is you deploy it on top of your graph and you do get some basic visualizations in templates, but you also mm -hmm. get a nice uh, graph exploration. Nice. So you can really explore the, the full graph. Um, mm -hmm. You get those, those annotations with the ontology information. So Bob Dylan is a laureate and in person. We can um, explore via those relations. Um, we can see uh, what else uh, we have that already. Um, but we can check for other people with the uh, birthplace um, in the US and further expand from here. Mm -hmm. We can also use a pathfinder um, to understand the graph. exactly to understand uh, how certain uh, nodes are related. So um, it's going to then um, run over that graph and, and give us as a result 
um, all of the different paths that are connecting those two via one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. six hops, and so on, on top of your, your graph. So you, you can you know, use that from the start. Um, you might just have a basic ontology someone shared. There might just be a, a little bit of data generated in the form of a graph. And you can put that on top. You can right away facilitate that with, with people and, and be like, well, you know, this is how I created our data. Um, I mapped people to their birthplaces and I mm -hmm. created this located in area link between the, the city and the country. Does this make sense to you? Is this correct? Um, did I get yeah. that right? And people might come in and be like, well, I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't use birthplace for both the city and the country. Maybe we should use different relations. Mm -hmm. um, that might be more obvious to a user or might be more straightforward in the results you're getting back to know if you're getting a city or a country returned. Um, and that, that's nothing you see in a turtle file. That's something mm -hmm. you see when you really look at it, when you explore it, when when users interact with it, and you know, and they're they're looking at this and they're like. Well, where is that information? Which which of those links would I have to go? Mm -hmm. That's when you realize, well, I, I didn't use the term they are familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're not they're not finding what they're looking for. And um for all of that, we have a, a ton of uh different components. And um I quickly wanna show that one second. So we have um the uh the Wikidata. Um, demo system as well. Mm -hmm. And here we created such a get started experience where you have for different types of our components additional examples on a large scale graph. So you can mm -hmm. really you know test this in, in large scale. Nice. Um, for example, uh, different uh, search options with form-based search with dependent fields where I select one field and that kind of defines one of the other fields I'm selecting so I can step-by-step step narrow down my search to the information that is interesting to me. And again, I, I get the, the code examples for that also published. I can utilize those. That gives you a, a number of uh, trial options. Um, for the, the more tech savvy people that really want to explore everything you saw, that's mm -hmm. to deploy it yourself. You just download it, you run your own instance, you connect it to your graph database, you play mm -hmm. with your own data, um, and you can dive really deep into it. For all of us, you're new to the topic, you just want to play around with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have your own graph maybe yet. Um, we offer you a, a hosted trial with guided support. So that mm -hmm. walks you in the form of a tutorial for mm -hmm. your first modeling of an ontology and vocabulary, your first steps in building applications. Um, and step-by-step step gets you to um, how to, to utilize MetaFactory to build a knowledge graph and explore awesome. it. Awesome. 